That's part of the joys of getting used to a new space and getting the equipment set up properly. Uh, I'm way louder than Michael, so I'm going to have to adjust that. <laughs> May God speak in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Amen. Please be seated. So since moving into this new space, uh, we've had this new tradition of writing something on the board. And you'll notice, for those of you up there, <laughs> um, it's blank tonight. I will be writing a question, but I wanted to work it into tonight. So um, first of all, uh, today is November 1st. Last night was Halloween. Halloween. And, and what's the full proper name for Halloween? All, All Hallows Eve. And so in the Jewish tradition, right, the day starts the evening. So the uh, uh, the celebration of a particular saint's day or a particular holy day starts at sundown, like the day before. So Christmas Eve is technically already Christmas. So All Hallows Eve is actually the beginning of today, which is All Saints Day. So this is a, uh, a book um, from produced by the National Church, and it's called For All the Saints. It's actually a, a compendium of all of the saints that we recognize in the Anglican tradition, um, and not just uh, traditional saints, but also people that we hold up as examples and of being holy. So there are some people from the Anglican tradition who are in this book who aren't uh, recognized as saints, say, in the Roman Catholic tradition, and in other traditions who observe saints. And there's something to that. So I just wanted to read to you a couple of quick points out of the book. Saints are Christians who, in various ways, often against great odds, showed an extraordinary love for Christ. The Holy Spirit acted in their lives so that they chose to bring aid to the needy, justice to the oppressed, hope to the sorrowful, and the divine word of forgiveness to sinners. For the sake of Christ, they were servants to the people of their day, and the service they rendered in the past makes them examples to the rest of the people of God throughout history. One second. making sure it doesn't feed back and blast everybody's ears. A couple of quick pieces of scripture. When Jesus was speaking about the resurrection, sorry, not when Jesus was speaking about the resurrection, but rather in the text in the Gospel of Matthew after Jesus' crucifixion, it says, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. From the book of the Acts of the Apostles, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And they're, of course, talking about Paul there. And from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. And from later on in the book of Romans, at present, however, I am going to Jerusalem in a ministry to the saints. And from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, 
together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. It wasn't until the fourth century that the tradition of celebrating saints and marking particular days was instituted in the church. Before that, all of the members of the church were known as saints. Those who were baptized Christians, those who followed the way of Christ, were called saints. <coughs> and as is the human way, over time, this tradition of referring to each other as saints started to take on a different meaning. Then it wasn't just everybody, then it only became the best, the most <coughs> noteworthy, the, the, the prime examples of what it meant to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Those were the people that got to be called the saints. Things changed, things shifted. And there was an element, too, of this sense of martyrdom. For, for a while, it seemed that only those who died in service to the gospel could be called saints. Well, and that changed as well over time. The time that we are living in now in the church, many are saying that we're moving in a direction that is more like the early church. So in that sense, it's time for us to be challenged in the way of how we think about saints. Saints are not just some super godly, extra special class of Christian. The saints are the baptized, the body of Christ. The saints of the church are you and I, and all of those who have gone before us, and all of those who will come after us. The word saint means holy, santa in Spanish, saint in French, or saint. It means holy, that which is seen as being holy. And what makes them holy is the fact that God has touched them. God has touched the lives of those people. And in that, they are made holy. Tomorrow in the church calendar is the celebration of all souls. And so we have this distinction within the tradition. There are those who are saints, and then there's the rest of us. And so we remember all of those who were of prime and particular example, and then we remember the rest of the dead. In some ways, that's, that's fine, because we need those superheroes of the faith, if you will. We need those people to look up to, those people who inspire us to do better and to be better, those who inspire us to live into those words, bring aid to the needy, justice to the oppressed, hope to the sorrowful, and the divine word of forgiveness to sinners. There's a church in Colorado. It's a Lutheran church, and their pastor is, I'm not quite sure how else to say it, she's a bit of a badass. Um, she was formerly a uh, stand-up comic, um, lived a pretty crazy life, um, and then somehow her life ended up taking a very sharp turn. She found herself uh, enrolled in seminary, getting married to a Lutheran pastor, and her entire life was changed. Um, and then she too became a Lutheran pastor. And not that she is in any way better than any other Lutheran pastor or pastor or priest or minister or any other member of the church, but rather because of her life experience, because she knows, because she's been in some pretty dark places, she is able to see people for who they are. And so her church is called the house for all saints and all sinners, because there is no separation. All saints are all sinners. The name of this church is what again? Sorry? St. George's. Anybody very briefly remember who St. George was? St. George was? Uh, yes, 
but, uh, le legendary dragon slayer in the realm of legend. Uh, before the legend, though, he was a soldier. He was a soldier of the Roman Empire. I can tell you that in history, there are some souls somewhere who do not think very highly of that man. <laughs> and, and, and it is funny, but it's also serious. And, and it's something worth considering. Because his life is made holy, not because of the church lifting him up and saying, look at what a great person George was. His life is holy because God touched it. That is what makes him holy. Nothing any of us did, nothing any of us could say, but because God touched his life and made it holy. And so God does the same to each and every one of us. And the hard part, the challenging part, is that that means that God touches the lives of the people that we don't like very much. And so the people that we are challenged to live with. Doreen, in her sermon last week, asked the question, you know, what do you love? And in that, she was also getting at relationships and people and the question of things. You know, do we love things more than people? Do we love some people more than others? Well, in living out our faith, we still have to love the people that we don't like very much. We know that it's easier said than done. And part of that, though, part of that is being able to see those people as holy, as touched by God. I said a pretty controversial thing at a Bible study recently. Um, I asked the question, what about Judas? We have this tradition where we write Judas out of life. There's a tradition, if you will, that says that in the time during Jesus' burial to the morning of the resurrection, uh, they say that, you know, where, where was Jesus? Was the tomb already empty? Was Jesus there? And this tradition, come legend, says Jesus went to hell to go and save his friend Judas. It's not anything that we do or that we don't do. God makes us holy. We may have committed the worst sins. We may have made the worst mistakes. But God promises forgiveness. And so this work of the saints, giving hope to the sorrowful, that's tied in pretty closely with the divine word of forgiveness to sinners. See, Judas's sin was that he thought that he was unforgivable for betraying Jesus and selling him out to the religious authorities. I mean, it plays a pretty key part in the story, but in the bigger picture, if it wasn't Judas, they would have figured some other way to get to Jesus. Judas wasn't that important. Judas thought that what he did was unforgivable, so he took his own life. That thing, that saying, that brief story that has become legend says that that is not beyond God's redemption. There are words that we say at funerals. Quoting Paul. Paul, whom, from the Acts of the Apostles, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, talking about Paul, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Remember that Paul pre presided presided over the stoning of Stephen. Paul presided over many such horrific things that religious people did in the name of God. Paul was confronted. Paul was changed. There was redemption and there was forgiveness. And now we call Paul saint. Paul is a pillar of the church. We rely on Paul's words and his letters for teaching. Paul, formerly Saul, a murderer, amongst other things. So on this celebration 
of the dead, which all saints and all souls is. The celebration of the dead of the church, we are reminded of Paul's other words, that there is nothing <coughs> in all of creation, neither height nor depth, nor anything in above, below, nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Full stop. Paul doesn't qualify it further. He just says that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We have grown in a way uncomfortable with death. Pay attention on the radio and in the media and even in movies with how you hear people talk about death. It's not something that we deal well with, at least here, in this part of the world. When we talk sometimes about ancestors, we talk about those who have gone before us, and sometimes it's put off as being too spiritualist or something else. But it is important to remember those friends and families, as well as those superheroes of the faith, who have gone before us. We talk about the intercession of the saints. Think about the history of St. George's as it celebrates 225 years. All of the people whose prayers that this place has been built on, we add our voices to theirs and we pray with them and they pray with us for the same things. We pray for aid for those who need it, food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, justice for the oppressed, hope to the sorrowful, and the divine word of forgiveness to sinners. These are the same prayers that they always have been and the same prayers that they always will be. So we remember those from our own community who have died and who have gone before us. Because if we believe that they have gone back to God, then they are no further from us than God. God finds a home in our heart. God makes God's home in our very midst. So just as God is not far from us, they are not far from us. We remember them and we are inspired by them. And they, like us, are sinners, but they are also saints, saints of the church, because God has touched their lives. This is the Paschal candle. This is the candle that we light at the service of baptism, recognizing God's divine love for us, recognizing when somebody is incorporated into the body of Christ, into the church. <coughs> we light the Paschal candle at people's funerals as well. We recite the baptismal creed at people's baptisms and at their funerals. So tonight, if you can pull those words from your core, you do know them. We won't say it aloud, but reflect on those words. Reflect on what those words mean. I will read a list of names that we have from our community, names of people that you were asked to fill out on a sheet there will be some space and you will be invited to lift up names that are on your hearts and minds of those who may not be on this list but who have died and gone before us. Dwight Tyler Ruddle. Edward Arthur Ruddle. Charles Vaughn. Helen Titarnik. Agnes Eva Ruddle. William Ruddle, Michael McFarlane, Mark Cruttenden, Abe and Vilma Finke, Vilma Hobbs, Marilyn Wainwright, 
Hartley Spofford, Catherine Manley, Henry Krajewski. And I would invite you either silently or aloud to lift up those names that are on your hearts and minds. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they, with all of your saints in light, through your grace, love, and mercy, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. So what would they have you do, those saints of the church? They would have you carry on and continue in those things which are important to them. Living into the reality of forgiveness. Living into what it means to be the body of Christ. The body that was, the body that is, and the body that will be. You are God's saints. Now live like one. Amen. <laughs>